Veep has won 17 Emmys, three SAG Awards, and other industry honors. I'm Matt Noble at Gold Derby here with Reed Scott, who played political operative Dan Egan. With the Veep final airing this week, Reed, what are you going to, or should I maybe say, uh, what do you miss the most? Oh, man. Working with this cast, no doubt about it. The greatest cast ever assembled. Uh, the greatest people I've ever gotten to work with. We, you know, seven seasons over eight years, we grew very, very close to one another. We go on vacations together. We were there at each other's weddings and births of children and everything. And um, man, it's never going to be quite the same. I'm never going to walk onto a, to a Veep set and get to see all my buddies like that. It's that That's what I'm going to miss the most. Yeah. Do you have um, a memory of that? cast uh like of, of working together on a scene or something that you just are particularly fond of you know in general it was the the uh, the early days of rehearsals you know we we did a veep is unusual we did a lot of rehearsing early on especially seasons one through four and um between shooting the pilot and then going back to shoot the rest of season one we we all went to london for a couple of weeks which is where our show's creator Armando Yanucci and all of his brilliant writers were based and sort of being sequestered together as a cast in the basement of this very posh hotel, slinging around these vulgarities and epithets. It, it, it was, it was so unusual. I would never done anything like that before in my career. It, we bonded so quickly. We moved through so much material so quickly we we i think we rehearsed five or six full scripts and it, it was there that we saw you know the magic of armando's process this distillation process of rehearsing and then improvising and then the writers would rewrite to incorporate our improv and so you know myself and the rest of the cast we very quickly gleaned that we are you know custodians of these characters in this story and it was that bonding experience that I don't think could ever be repeated. And that's what I'll miss a lot. Mm. You said you like had the best cast on television. And I'm sure like, you know, a lot of actors say that, and there's a lot of very uh, strong cast we're on TV. We're all wrong. But, we're all wrong. <laughs> it's ours. Yeah. But do you think it is that distillation process, that like process you went through at the early years of uh, when that show was uh, forging that sort of made you guys the, the such a strong cast? I do. I really do. I, I think, um, you know, between going to London for these very long in-depth rehearsal processes, processes, which is very unusual for television. You rarely get to, I mean, maybe you rehearse a scene the day before just to work out the blocking, but we, we were really, you know, constructing the characters and constructing the world. It was really unusual. And then to shoot the first four seasons in Baltimore, which was home, for none of us, um, you were <laughs> sort of, for better or for worse, thrust together. And I think we just got very lucky that we all respected each other as artists, but then really grew very close as friends. And and, and that happens on any set with any cast, you know, you, you're, or you hope so anyway, that that closeness, uh, that you achieve that closeness because ultimately it, it does really help with what you're doing um on camera but there was something very unusual and i think we all even sensed it happening very early on that we just we really liked each other and and then when you give the you know you get the material that we got on veep where you're we're all you know just, just despicable people saying the worst possible things to one another you better like each other because you got to have some thick skin to sort of to, to, to hurl some of these insults and um and everyone was down to play. And I think w once we saw that the trust was there, that everyone was gonna gonna trust one another, um, it happened quickly. It happened very quickly. And I'm I'm blowing up here. My my texts are going crazy. <laughs> oh man, uh, yeah, they're they um, yeah. No, probably everyone watching the video is checking their phones now. Going, oh. yeah, um, <laughs> right. Um, how the season ended this week, uh, the, or at least the final aired this week. What did, uh, how did you think about how they closed out your character arc and how they closed out the series? 
I loved it. I lo- when I first read the season finale script, um, and like all things Veep, it was very last minute. I think I read it at the table read because that's when they gave it to us. The pages were still warm from the Xerox machine. And I looked across the table to Matt Walsh and I just, our, our eyes just locked and I said, holy shit, are we going to pull this off? Like, is this, can we do this? This is, this is big and this is kind of out there. And he's like, yeah, man, I think we're going to go for it. This is going to be really fun. And then the, the, the table read itself went so exceedingly well. It's like, yeah, if, if we can, if we can capture this, you know, on camera, we've got something. And it was just so much fun to shoot. And I knew from the very, you know, from the moment we said action, that this was going to be a very satisfying end. On a personal note, I loved where Dan ended up. I, I think it was a very fitting, you know, place. Finally, he, he sort of eked out a win. Like he, he always, you know, in, in the, the ladder climbing game, he's always sort of, you know, one rung up, two rungs back. And I think finally to, to, for him to end up in a place where he's just so happy. He's like, he's exactly where he should be in his life uh, 24 years into the future. So I, I, I was very pleased with that. Yeah. Uh, probably exactly where uh, 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 he should be for America too. Uh, Absolutely. Oh, oh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, right. Um, well, you actually on that scene, uh, I, I spoke with uh, Timothy Simons yesterday and I asked him if he had any questions for you. And he uh, wanted to know, why does Dan look so good 24 years? You know, just clean living, man. Yeah. Just clean living. You know, he got, he, he got all the injections and, uh, you know, all the microderm abrasions and just, you know, clean living. Uh, he, he married a much younger woman. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> Uh, and tanning, you know, it's a, it's, 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 a, it's a, it's a beautiful, healthy lifestyle down there in, in Hermosa beach. <laughs> yeah. There you go. Uh, also I thought was interesting in this final season was, uh, your storyline with Amy and going, uh, with her to get the abortion, you being, uh, sort of the father of, uh, her unborn child and things. And that I just, on, uh, that would have <laughs> erupted. What's it, what, sorry? <laughs> the demon, sp- excuse me, <laughs> the demon spawn that would have emerged from her loins. I know that would have been terrible. Yeah, but it reminded me of an episode um, from season two where your character uh, said uh, the quote was, I love abortion. I'm an abortionado, but I'd go pro life in a fucking fetal heartbeat if it meant winning. And I thought that was really nice to come back to, uh, not from a political angle, but from a personal angle, see how Dan would approach uh, that particular circumstance. Um, Yeah, it was, it was bold. I, when they, when they pitched that episode, um, I loved it because I love anything that sort of, you know, moves the needle on a, on a social conversation. Um, And we got a, we got, we got a fair amount of, of, of pushback about that too. But I, I'm glad that we went, you know, uh, sort of head first into that topic. I think that's the only way Veep has ever done it. No matter what the issue has been, we sort of run right at it. There's no point in sort of, you know, lightly poking at it. You got to bash it over its head. And that's what gets people to sort of like wake up and, 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 and talk about it and have a conversation. And whichever side of the fence you may, may fall, I think the fact that it started a conversation is, is wonderful. Mm. Yeah, and I, I think your your the characters on your show are so despicable, and and Dan Dan is right up in the mix with it. That it's interesting seeing how they d- deal with issues that for other people might be dealt with in different ways. Oh yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, these people are horrible. I know someone yeah. someone said there's a list out there of the most. Uh, they rank all of the characters through seven seasons of Veep from most despicable to least despicable. And Dan came in at number two, which I was very proud of. <laughs> yeah. Who was one? Selena. Yeah. No, I would have thought so. Yeah, she's, um, she's Daenerys Targaryen. She's the Queen of Darkness. Yeah. Just burn, burn Washington burn to the ground. ground. Yeah. Um, what, as we saw this series, uh, as it went on, uh, there was changes in the American political landscape as well as the television landscape. And... I think what was interesting is you probably got closer to commenting on 
the state of current day Washington in terms of uh, figures and events. Uh, I think the show always was a commentary on how Washington operates. Mm -hmm. But um, how did you find that sort of uh, ha that shift that the show made with the, uh, I guess, rise of Trump? And yeah. Um, yeah. It was it was interesting. It was it was very tricky. It was very tricky. I know our, our writers really, you know, labored over how how close to that do you want to get? Because we've we've never, you know, um, it's been a parody of Washington at large. It's never been a parody of anyone in particular. Though people might draw their own conclusions that Selena, you know, I've heard people say, oh, well, she's clearly, you know, Hillary Clinton, or she's clearly uh, Sarah Palin. And the answer is unequivocally, no, she's a little bit of all of that, just like all of our characters are. This season got a little bit closer. Um, and I think it was necessary because just by doing that, we sort of commented on the shift in politics. So there was a shift in our show. Um, I think had this not been our final season, I don't think we would have run at that at such speed because um, something about it felt, felt final. So it's like, yeah, you might as well go for the jugular. You might as well sort of like lay your cards out and sort of, you know, um, you know, lay your soul bare as, as we kind of did with the show. It was also really fun. It, it was, this is certainly, I sort of prepped some of my, you know, family and, and, and friends when they asked what this new season's like, it, it's, it's the broadest season in the entire you know, catalog of, of, of Veep. Mm -hmm. The comedy's bigger, it's broader, uh, everyone's dialed up to 11. Um, everyone at this point is not just like their, their, their own character's id. You know, they're just sort of speaking their, their, their most sincere, authentic selves at all time, however horrible that may be. And it made for some really great comedy. It kept us fresh for us. And um, I think because of the political, the current political landscape, it was absolutely necessary. Like we, we, we said something, we say something every season. And this is what we said this time was that like, look what's happened. Everything is completely bizarre. It's bonkers. It's run off the rails. And so of the, the, the way our characters are behaving. Was there a favorite scene to shoot over the years? One that sticks out early on from season one, it might've been episode two or maybe three of season one where Dan and Selena and Gary are in the Oval Office and they drop the lipstick into the insignia and the carpet in the Oval Office and it causes a big smudge and we're all trying to clean it up and we're sort of falling all over each other. And it was just such fun, you know, very Buster Keaton-esque physical comedy that we got to do very early on in the season or in the, in the series. And, um, and it was just fun. It was just silly. And it was, we laughed so hard, so hard. And, and because it was one of the first scenes that we got to do like that, I think that that's always sort of stuck with me. Yeah, and she wasn't president at that point either. No, so no. they were very all worried in getting in trouble with the big guy. Yeah. Uh, uh, what the um, Also what uh, sort of uh, developed for your show as you went on was uh, your success at awards. What was that uh, journey like for you? It, it was wild, it was absolutely wild. I mean, we, you know, we, we all loved our show from the very beginning, but I don't think any of us thought that it would have the success that it did. You know, I mean, in your wildest dreams, maybe, you know, um, but looking back, yeah, you know, Veep really, it, it did it. It stood out. It was so different than any other comedy on television. And it took people a while to find it. I remember like, you know, um, friends or fans or people I met, they sort of, they started to find the show around season three, some even around season four. And that's when the real success of the show, you know, sort of came flooding in. And it was just, it was wonderful to be part of that. You know, intimidating at times. I, I you know, I get sort of a lot of social anxiety around <laughs> the award show stuff. I never really know. Cause I'm always sort of blown away by all the, just the immense, you know, amount of talent in those rooms. I feel like, what the hell am I doing here? This is so strange to be in this in this sort of company. It's it's incredibly flattering, and you know what a treat. If it never happens again, I got to be part of it through Veep, and that that's it, it's been amazing. Hmm. 
Uh, and final question, Reid. Uh, what? Well, the, the final question is a double one. It's firstly, what was your last shot on the series? Uh, the last scene that you shot, and uh, what was what was that like for you filming that, particularly with in mind uh, the first scene you shot eight years ago? Oh wow! Yeah. Okay. So, uh, the last shot for me. The, the entire last episode was an emotional roller coaster because, you know, our, our cast is very large and um, our storylines are sort of um, sort of um, parceled out. And because of that, we were sort of saying goodbye to characters every day for nine days. Yeah. And so every day was a different sort of emotional goodbye for someone. And I was just trying to keep my shit together. Tony Hale kept on giving me a hard time. He's like, when are you going to cry, man? When are you going to break? So I'm not going to break. I'm not going to do it. I got I to gotta, I gotta, I gotta save it up because if I, if I break now, then I'll never be able to shoot my scene later. Yeah. Well, if anyone knows uh, how to break, it's Tony Hale, right? It's Tony, it's Tony Hale, yeah. Um, so my last scene was at the funeral, at the presidential funeral. And... It was the scene of introducing my my young wife to Amy, and then we sort of joke about the past. And I give everybody my card, you know, in case they want to buy or sell a piece of property in the Laguna Beach area. I'm your guy. Here's my cell. And then noticing Tony up at the at, at the casket, and um, and then we walked out the back door, and they called cut, and it got very quiet in this room and you know there's 300 extras in our entire crew and then david mandel came over and said you know ladies and gentlemen that is a a an episode a season and a series wrap on reed scott and i i <laughs> i kind of lost it in my way it was a lot of i i sort of because i'm a i'm afraid of my own emotions i i sort of was like fist pumping more than crying and it, it felt very triumphant. I really loved it. Um, it was wonderful. And, and yeah, and, and contrasting that with my first scene, which the first scene I shot in Veep was when I meet Selena for the first time. It was um, Dan is working um, for another Senator and the vice president comes in and immediately he pounces on her and starts you know, letting her know. It's like, oh, so this is what I do currently. Um, but I thought you made a couple of mistakes in your campaign and here's what they were. I really think I'd be an asset to your team. Like he immediately starts glomming onto her. And, um, it was such a fun scene to do because then that scene sort of morphs into the, uh, Dan, Amy and Tony all hanging out, um, in the little ante room and eat, immediately you, you see Dan just give Gary so much shit because he doesn't know how to use the coffee machine. And it was, <laughs> I mean, Dan is very on unevolved human being which was why it was so fun to play you always knew where his true north was he was just he was always a shit he was just always a shit oh that's good and when when you broke after that final scene uh did did tony see it uh yeah he did i i, I think my break wasn't quite as satisfying for tony as he wanted i think he wanted to see me like you know on my hands and knees you know clutching my hair and like why and then sort of like losing my you know losing my composure but um i just buried my face and everybody give everybody big hugs because there's still more to go i think there was still one more day of shooting i, I lost it when julia wrapped because that was the final final shot and that's when you know the champagne came out and then the tears came right after and um that was that was tough but it, i mean but in the sweetest possible way um yeah. You know, we're saying goodbye to these characters. We're saying goodbye to the show. But like I said, you know, earlier on, we, we all are part of a, an amazing new family now. So, you know, we're not saying goodbye to each other for, you know, 30, 40 years if I have my way. Yeah, knock on wood, you'll see each other at the Emmys uh, coming up soon. And there might be a few other awards in the pipeline. And then I'm, I'm sure other in other areas of your lives as well. Thanks, Reid. Uh, and to everyone watching this video, you can go to goldderby.com right now where you can compete against the experts and editors to try to be uh, Hollywood's top awards prognosticator. And uh, subscribe to this video, uh, to this channel, if you want to uh, get more updates on uh, videos with other uh, stars like Reid. Thanks, thanks so much for chatting with us, Reid, and uh, all the best. Okay. Yeah.